A couple weeks back, Netflix dropped a brand new sci-fi horror anime series in Exception. I finally got the chance to watch it, so let's talk about it. Before I get into my thoughts, though, I want to hear what you thought of it, so head on down to the comment section below and let me know. And while you're there, I'd really appreciate it if you could leave a like on this video and subscribe if you're a fan of anime and Japanese gaming content and want to keep up with all the latest in Netflix anime. So for those that watch my most anticipated anime series of this year, which I uploaded all the way back in either January or February, you will know that this series was one of my most anticipated purely because of the intrigue I had for it. And of course, the character design was done by Yoshitaka Amano, who is most well known for doing a lot of the iconic Final Fantasy art in like the first five or six games. And I guess I will start off with Yoshitaka Amano's character design. It's fantastic. If you've seen any of his work, it's very distinctive, especially in the character designs. A lot of like long face type stuff. And yeah, like if you look at his artwork for Final Fantasy, you look at this, you can see a very consistent style and it absolutely shines through. If for whatever reason this series ends up within the Crunchyroll Anime Awards or any sort of anime awards show, and there is the option to vote for character design for this series, you know damn well I'm going to be voting for it. And to go along with this great character design, you also have a fantastic voice cast that is full of A-list people within the voice acting industry. Of course, front and center you do have Nolan North playing, I guess, sort of the lead role of Lewis, he is fantastic as always, but you also have a lot of other people in here, which off the top of my head I can't think of, but they are all top quality. The voice acting is generally very good, and the kind of original language for this is English. So this is one of the very few circumstances I would say where I would highly recommend you watch this in English as opposed to Japanese. One of the more technical aspects that also really shined through where I didn't necessarily expect it to was Ruichi Sakamoto's score. We heard it a little bit in the first trailer and I thought it was fantastic there. Definitely carries over to the series. It's got that sci-fi feeling to it where it needs to be, but it also feels deeply emotional. There's a, a lot of music in here that really adds to some emotional beats that I don't think would have been as effective without it. Which brings me into the narrative aspects of this series, which I think are really good. I think the question of who gets to decide who lives is a very effective moral questioning that uh, is really echoed throughout the entire series. I loved the first half in particular, and for me it was far more effective than the second half. For those that have seen the trailers, you'll know that it's dealing with one of the characters being misprinted. To give a bit of context to the world setup, what you have on the ship is a 3D printer, that is making up living organisms because humans can travel through space at light speed or whatever so you have this 3d printer that is making these organisms closer to this planet that they want to inhabit so that it can prepare it for when the humans eventually come and nolan north's character of lewis ends up being misprinted due to some solar flare and thus he ends up being sort of this mutated monster human entity which then brings in the question of do we kill this person? Is this person human? What decides whether they are human? Is it how they look? Is it how they feel? Is it their actions? And I think that concept, if you can do it well, it can be extremely effective on an emotional level. And for me, I think they did it very, very well in that first half. But then the second half becomes a bit more of a whodunit. It reminds me a lot of the thing where you don't really know who you can trust and all that kind of stuff. And I just didn't find that quite as engaging. I thought it felt a little bit more generic Still solid, still has that effective moral questioning in some places, but I do think that the first half is where this series really shines. One of the biggest talking points, as is usually the case with 3D or CGI anime series, is the animation. Like I said, the character design is incredible. The overall design of like the environments and then the ship especially, which looks like this giant fish with this weird cocoon thing on the bottom, that is all fantastic. But the actual animation itself, sometimes can look pretty solid. And like I said, the character design and overall world design really aids in that. But there are other times where it looks a little bit too smooth and lacks texture, and therefore it just looks a little bit unfinished. And I think that is especially prevalent on this misprinted version of Lewis. With most of the other characters, it's not overly noticeable just because they are human and generally skin smooth, clothing is smooth, doesn't seem as off. But with the misprinted version of Lewis, got a lot of hair, obviously he's a lot more mutated, and therefore you feel like it should have more texture to it, and when it doesn't, it just doesn't look right. But the one aspect that really let me down in this series was the horror elements. I am not the biggest fan of horror, but when it comes to sci-fi horror, it can be very effective. And the whole setup of this series, even looking at the trailer, it had a very effective setup in terms of horror, but also having the emotion and the humanity behind it, which I think is where horror succeeds the most. And as I went onto Netflix to check out the series and saw that it was rated 12, my disappointment was immeasurable. The horror elements are not going to be there, and they're not really. In some places, maybe slightly, 
but it could have been far better in terms of that horror stuff and I actually think in some places would have made it a better series. Overall the core of Exception is extremely effective in its messaging about humanity and who decides who gets to live and who dies and also technically there's a lot of great aspects to it whether it's the character design, the score, the world design or the voice acting. But on the other side of that there is also some hit and miss animation, there's a lack of horror which I really would have liked to see and it's definitely a series of two halves. The first half is fantastic, second half I have more issues with. At the end of the day though, if you're looking for something that's a little bit more unique, whether it is because of the animation style, the story, the world building ideas, I would highly recommend you give this series a chance because you're not really going to get much that's exactly like it. So with all that in mind, I'm going to give Exception a B. Before I get out of here though, I'd really appreciate if you could leave a like on this video. Also subscribe if you're a fan of anime and Japanese gaming. If you want to see more Netflix anime content in the future, I've got a review coming up for Romantic Killer, a new series that dropped just a few days ago. And I'm also going to have a review of Luckism coming within early November when that series releases. And expect plenty more in the future. November is pretty slow generally, aside from Luckism we've got the return of Uncle from Another World. If you are a fan of horror anime though, a couple of days ago I released a review for Demon City Shinjuku, and then tomorrow I'm going to be releasing a review for Perfect Blue. Above all else though, I want to hear what you thought of this series, so head on down to the comment section below and let me know. What did you like most about it? Was it the world building? Was it the character design? Was it the moral question at its core? Was it the music? Was it the characters? Was it the overall narrative? Just let me know what you did and didn't like about it. As always, thank you so much for tuning into MChat today and I'll see you all in the next video.